and gentlemen of the jury. What the state is asking you to do is to defend and preserve our parks. That's what we're asking you to do. This is just as important to the state as, is it, as it is to the defendants. Now, defense counsel talked about the law in this case. You're going to hear the law from the judge. That is the law that you are to apply in, the, in this case. You are going to receive jury instructions. The judge is going to read these to you at the close of the state's case. And he's going to tell you about the law that you need to apply in this case. And we'll get to that. But this case is about choices. Choices that the defendants made on October 19th, 2011. Choices of which they knew the consequences to at the time that they made those choices. They made the choice to stay in the parks after they were asked to leave by Kathleen Cunha. They chose to remain. This wasn't part of the movement. This was their choices. You heard that half of the people there just left without anything, without any citation, without an arrest. You even heard from Arnie Albert. He told you he's part of Occupy, and he left without anything. You also heard from um, other witnesses and the defendants. And you heard that um, 15 to 20 people re received citations. And then what did you hear? That these three decided not to leave, that it was their choice to stay and be arrested. That wasn't for the movement, that was their choice. And that's why we're here today, because of that. Now you heard from Captain Cunha, he was telling you about what the police department did in this case. And what they did was they allowed them some leeway. They allowed the occupiers time to get their message across. Why? You heard Captain Cunha. He didn't want this to end violently. He had heard of other Occupy protests that had ended violently. And he did not want that to happen in this case, in our city, in Manchester, in the park right back there. So what did they do? They used the discretion. They decided not to enforce the law for those four days, for everybody, not just the occupiers, for everybody, that everybody be treated equally. That's what they did. They didn't enforce it for four days. They established that rapport with them over those four days. They built that relationship. And you heard about that relationship and the mutual respect that Captain Cunha had with the occupiers and the occupiers had with him. Could they have gone that first night on October 15th to Victory Park and said, get out of here? Absolutely. But what would that do for that relationship? How would that have ended? Maybe not so peacefully, like this one did. But they chose to wait and buy their time so that they could develop that relationship. And on October 19th, you heard Captain Cunha went at nine o'clock in the evening. That was the first time he went. He told you I wasn't even in uniform at that time. And he went and he spoke with them kind of gave him a heads up. Hey, you know, we're going to be coming back and, and you guys are going to have to leave tonight. We have to enforce our laws. We have to. And you saw the video where he, when he goes back at 11 p.m. And he's like, I respectfully request that you guys, you know, leave the park. Now you heard that some, because they knew this was happening, they packed up some of their gear, they had put it other places. So it wasn't everything that was there that was originally there. They packed up some stuff and they moved it because they knew that this was coming. Did Captain Cunha or the MPD have to show them that respect? Nope. They could have gone in there at 2 o'clock in the morning and said, get out. But they gave them plenty of time to get their stuff. You heard the testimony that they gave them 60 to 90 minutes, it, or 60 to 90 minutes before everybody was clear of the park. On the video, you heard somebody ask Captain Cunha, you know, can I come back tomorrow? Absolutely. 7 a.m. Okay, I'll see you at 7 a.m. And they came back. These defendants were given multiple opportunities just like everybody else there was. They chose to stay. Now, they make a big deal about the fact that it's 24 hours a day that they got to stay there, that it had to be 24 hours a day. Their argument is that they couldn't get the message across to the government, their message, without staying there 24 hours a day, without staying there from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. That's ridiculous. If 16 hours a day to give their message across, along with all the other ways that they can do it. Now, you heard, you heard 
from the defendant themselves, and you heard from some of the witnesses who are part of Occupy. Army was able to go there during the 16 hours. He said he didn't know exactly what time he left, but he went there. He didn't spend the night. He was able to convey his message. You heard that uh, Elizabeth Edwards had only spent two nights out of the four nights there. She didn't have to stay every single night. You heard from uh, Elizabeth Grunwald. She didn't spend any. She was going to spend the night that they, they were asked to leave. That was her testimony. So do they have to stay in the park 24 hours a day to get their message across? No, they don't. Now, so you ask yourselves, why are we here? Now the judge read the stipulation to you and he'll read the elements of the offense to you. Because again, you're gonna get these in jury instructions and you're gonna get the law in this case. And he's gonna tell you that in order to prove criminal trespass, the state must prove to you that the defendants enter the place or remain in the place. The defendants knew they were neither licensed or privileged to enter or remain upon that the defendants were in that place in defiance of an order to leave or in defiance of an order not to enter, and that such an order to leave or not to enter was personally communicated to the defendants by the owner of that place by some other authorized person. And you heard, they, they admit that. They, they admit those elements of the offense. They admit <coughs> that they committed this crime. There should be no doubts in your mind that they committed this crime. So again, why are we here? As my co-counsel told you in the beginning, we're here because the defendants want you, you to ignore the law. For you to say, it's okay to break the law in this case. That is what they're asking you to do. That it's okay to break the criminal trespass law. We're not here to decide what they were protesting or anything like that. We're here about the criminal trespass law that they broke. Now, the defendants want you to find them not guilty because they're saying that their actions are protected by the First Amendment. It's not true. This case um, is not about the Constitution. The judge is not going to tell you that the defendant's behavior is protected by the Constitution. And his instructions, he's not going to tell you that that law, the ordinance, he's not gonna tell you that's not unconstitutional. And why? Because it is constitutional. He's not gonna tell you that. But he is going to tell you this, that the state constitution, which you heard defense counsel is very protective, live free or die state. The state constitution guarantees the preservation of the freedoms of speech and assembly. However, under the language of the Constitution, neither of these rights is an absolute right. So you don't get free reign. You don't get to do it any place, any time, anywhere that you want. That is to say, the rights of speech and assembly are subject to some restrictions. Under the law, the government can restrict the time, place, or manner of speech in public parks if the restriction is reasonable, content neutral, narrowly serves a significant governmental interest, and allows other opportunities for expression. Well, that's exactly what the ordinance is in this case, ladies and gentlemen. Is it reasonable? Absolutely. That park is open 16 hours a day. And what are the parks there for? They're there for the enjoyment of our community, for us, all of us, not just for a few. They're there for everybody. What happens when, if, if you find these defendants not guilty, and you say that it's okay for them to stay in those parks 24, 24 seven, absolutely. Now you heard uh, Barbara Cashin, uh, Attorney Cashin, talk to Kathy Cleary and she asked him, did anybody else, any other political groups, ask to camp out there? And his answer was no. Well, what do you think a verdict of not guilty is going to do? It's gonna tell these defendants and anybody else, to, hey, go camp in our parks. What would have happened on the General Assembly Day you heard on October 15, 2011? There was about 400 people there, I think that was Matthew Morris who estimated that. All those people decided to camp in our parks. What would have happened is one would have turned into a campground and those parks would have been the enjoyment for a few, not for everybody. Now, in its opening, the state wasn't saying that the defendants were special and unique. We're saying that they are not. They are just like everybody else. They're saying that they should be allowed uh, to break the curfew violation. Uh, you heard Attorney Cashin talk about the curfew. It's okay to keep the park secured. But that these defendants were okay in the park, they weren't doing anything wrong, so therefore they should be, there should be an exception for them. Their whole protest is about one of the things is wealth disparity and the fact that they're the 99% and there's 1% of the population that's being treated differently and they should be treated more like them. Well, what they're asking you to do in this case is treat them as the 1% and make an exception for them for the curfew for the park ordinance, which you heard is routinely enforced by the police department. They're not an exception to the rule. They're just like all of us. We should all have the same rules to abide by and live by. 
and they're asking you to change that. That's not right and that's not fair to us who do abide by the rules. Now, you heard about this ordinance, which you're going to have a copy of, the Park Operating Policy. This policy is made by the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. And this policy was enacted, in, or this ordinance was uh, passed in 1971. Now, one of the things uh, that is an exhibit in this case that you'll get to read, and we didn't, we didn't read this during the file, but you'll be able to read this. It's an exhibit in this case. Is the, This is a certified copy from 1970 of the minutes of a public meeting with regular people talking for and against the curfew ordinance. This is information on um, city aldermen had at the time that they're, they're thinking about passing this ordinance. And you'll hear some of the pros and cons, and, and you know them anyways, just using your everyday experiences of what pros and cons are with the park. Veterans Park, some of these parks are right in downtown Manchester, where you have the bars. As it is, you heard Kathleen Cunha uh, tell you that they have problems with indecency, vandalism, and litter during the day. But what happens by the cover of night when you have the bars closing and you have people who are drunk coming into the parks and doing things? Parks are closed for a reason. It is for the safety of the community. It's also putting a wear and tear on the park. If you allow people to start going in there 24 hours a day, your grass is being killed, your, your trees are being harmed. Like, there's a whole bunch of things that could happen if you allow the parks to be open 24 hours a day. Not even counting the expense that it would be for the city to help maintain that. Now, You'll see as well on the um, on the um, park ordinance um, that not only was it passed in 1971, um, it was there was an amended ordinance passed in 1979, and again the last time it was reviewed was in 2010. And they still kept that curfew. They could have changed it. They didn't. Now, one of the things we discussed with one of the witnesses, I think it was Will Hopkins, was that there's many, many ways to spread your message. You don't have to be camped in a park for 24 hours a day. 16 hours a day is enough. But they talked about the fact that they did some marching, okay? Do some more those. Parades. You can do rallies. Voting. Going to the legislature. Going to the board of all. You can do a whole bunch of other things to get your message across other than camping in a park that is meant for all of us to enjoy, not just them, 24 hours a day. There was other things that they could do. Now, you heard that the defendants weren't arrested for what they were protesting. That's not why they were arrested. They are arrested for violating the criminal trespass law. That is why we're here. We're not here to agree or disagree with the message that they were trying to, to send off to everybody in the community when they were, when they were there. That's not why we're, here, why we're here. Do people have the right to free speech? Absolutely they do. But. Again, as the judge will instruct you, that's not an absolute right. You can't go in a building and yell fire. You can't just do whatever you want whenever you want. And contrary to what Ms. Edwards told you, you're not a law unto yourself. We live into a society that has laws and rules, and they're there for a reason. They're there for the protection of all of us. Can you imagine what kind of society that we would live in if everybody got to decide which laws are applicable to them because they had their reason? Whether we thought it was a good reason or not, it wouldn't matter. That's why we have laws and rules. And if you want to have them change, you go through the proper methods. There are proper ways, if you are dissatisfied with a rule or a law, to go about doing it. Not by doing what they did. That's not the way to go about it. And then coming before you and asking you to disregard the oath and the laws of this state and say they are an exception to the rule. Ladies and gentlemen, they committed the crimes in this case. They admitted that they, that they did it. And it was not part of the movement. Again. Three of them were arrested. The rest of them, citation for $50, and half of them left without anything. They were able to get their message across in the four days that they were there, and that was because of the Manchester Police Department trying to just develop that respectful relationship. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the laws of the park applies to everyone who wants to go into those parks. Everyone, whether they're a member of the 99% or the 1%, they, are, they apply to all of us. All 100% of the people in New Hampshire and in Manchester. They apply to everybody. It's important to remember it's not their park. It's our park. It's the community park, not theirs. Every single person has to abide by the same rules when they go into that park. But the defense in this case want you to make an exception for them. In this case, they want you to say they're the 1%. Well, ladies and gentlemen, 
They're not unique. They're not special. But what they are is they're guilty of this crime of criminal trespass. And you should uphold the laws of the state, and you should find them guilty of this crime. Sir, my, uh, my instructions are about 20 minutes. Does anyone need a break? <laughs>